ice fishing today. In fact, we are spear fishing our first time for Northern Pike. We have been out to this lake before, but we took a different route this morning and it took us a little bit longer. I think it was only seven miles, but it was bumpy. And I think it took us an hour and a half, but that's okay because we did make it and we're gonna be able to fish today. We have been known to spend a whole day burning the daylight just figuring out trails and kind of getting confused. Uh, Eric's already got a hole dug for us and I think we have found our spot. We're very excited. And a special thank you to the folks that put in the trails because that is how we got here so quickly. <laughs> First time we came out to this lake, we had a manual auger. I don't think we could do this back then. So I've got six holes drilled. And what we're doing, since this is a 10 inch auger, we're trying to make like a big square opening because we're not just jigging with a fishing pole today. We're gonna be throwing a big spear in there. We'll take a look at that later, but whew, this is a workout. We gotta keep on drilling. Look at that, it's getting there. Put my shovel in there. body there and this will be the front? I think it'll sit right here maybe. Oh, so opposite of what I just said? Nice job. How many holes is that? Ten? I'm pretty sure it was like 12 holes. Yeah, it may have been 12. Don't lose my shovel in here, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just be careful by that auger. It gripped at the end and kept wanting to like pull it in. Oh, I've had that happen, but, but usually there's not a good hole, so it's not a problem, you know? That's how to pick the ice is right there. How thick is it? 18 inches it looks like. Man, for I knew this was going to take a lot of time, but I just <laughs> uh, we're excited. that guy's name? The guy from The Little Mermaid? Triton? Or Titan. Is that Titan. Titan? Titan. Something. You guys know who I'm talking about. That's what I feel like with this spear. This thing is pretty awesome. We bought it locally, but I believe he said that he gets them shipped up from Minnesota, and that's where they're made. Look at that thing. Look at the tines on that. Nice barbs on them. Cool. So I don't know specs on this. I think it's an eight pound. Looks to be about a little over five feet. It's got a piece of... Uh, Cordage looks like paracord right there that goes all the way to the end. I'm not sure what you tie this off onto. I mean, maybe I'm gonna tie it off to my leg or something or my wrist, but you throw it in and you spear a pike. And it might be hard to tell from uh, just looking at this thing, but like I said, eight pounds. This thing is really heavy. And let's check out our decoys we got. So we got two different little ice spear fishing uh, decoys. And these are similar to like a jig that we would use to catch a pike, but they don't have any uh, hooks on them. They have a little weight in there. This one's got some sort of pellets in there to make it rattle. So I'm gonna let Ariel pick which one she wants to use. So she's gonna be the one doing it. You want the big one? Okay, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna hook this up on a little ice fishing rod and uh, Ariel is gonna bring in a pike for us and I'm gonna spear it. At least that's the plan. We'll see what happens. I would tie it off to your wrist. That's what I was thinking. I don't know if I should tie it off my foot. Pull me in or something. Ooh, it's already warmer in here. It seems to be making it brighter. It seems to be, yeah. I can see in there better now. I mean, I can't see in there great. I can't see a pike at all, though. Sort of a science No, no put, that, put that thing in there. You'll be able to see a fish. Uh, uh, shine a flashlight or something down there. The bottom's right there. Oh my gosh, my pole's like instantly iced over now. We're gonna give it a try. This water is very dark and murky and we can't see down there very well at all. So I don't know. Let's see if we're gonna entice one in, see if we can see it down there. I'm gonna sit right here. Eric was checking if we have anything or any sort of way to light up the water from the bottom. The theory of this type of fishing is called like dark house fishing. You make everything dark on top 
you have this big hole it lights up naturally underneath and you can see the fish and you can spear them uh, the problem is we can't see anything uh, so we've been troubleshooting closing everything off eric even put some snow around the edge to block to block out all the gaps and we've also tried having the windows open i mean we just really cannot see down there very well perhaps this wasn't the right lake to choose there is something in the ground around here that makes like a red rusty color sediment that kind of sits on the bottom of the lake or brown and i think that's what's going on we're just not able to to see down there it's not lighting up underneath it okay. well, you, you brought in the you brought in the yeah trying to make the best of things out here <laughs> and i love these jigs i think this is called columbia river tackle i think and they're like we call them the dancers so they're really cool jigs you can get i'm just gonna see if i can do some fishing is that what you're resorting to? Just a little bit of fishing today? Hot coffee and fishing. Yeah, I mean, I just, we just cannot see in there. I feel like if one even came, I'd just be like blindly throwing the spear. You know what I mean? So let's do that. And one of the cool things about spear fishing is compared to regular fishing, when you're regular fishing, there could be multiple fish that come by your jig and just don't even bite it and they just swim by. Spear fishing, you can kind of like see them. And even if they don't attack your jig or your decoy, you could, you could spear them. I think a couple things are gonna help us. I think we should go on a sunny day. Oh gosh. You mean sunny day is gonna light up the ice and light up the lake? Shoot through the lake the ice more. Yeah, yeah it's gonna light up the bright because it's like it is so overcast today that you can't even see the sun. So come on a sunny day and go to a lake that's clear. It's not very clear ice, you know what I mean? <sighs> While we're out here, we're gonna try a few things, see if this makes a difference. We moved the hut, and we're gonna try to get rid of the snow and maybe the sun or what's up of the sun will penetrate through the ice better and light up our little area and then we'll put our tent back on. See if it does anything. Close this door. I officially cannot see anything. That didn't help at all. Is it because we have all this light coming through the uh, sides now? I don't believe so. No, but it seems worse. You know, if we don't catch a fish, we'll here, you know? Looks the same, honestly. I can't I can't see anything down there. Okay. It actually looks a lot brighter in the camera than it is in real life. Let me shut the door real quick and see what it looks like. No, it's I can't see anything down there. I don't know if we made it worse or if we made it better, but Well, believe it or not, with the ice fishing hut off of the hole, just out here in the open, I actually had a fish come and hit the decoy. The problem was I couldn't see the fish at all. It just took it like it took my lure and it went away. You didn't even have your spearfish out and there was no, there's no lure, uh, hooks. Yeah, there's no hook on the decoy, so I just bit the decoy. We went and grabbed the spear and tried to see if we could get it to come back, but we still just cannot see down in there more than like, you know, under two feet, which is just not enough. So I'm just jigging with a little lure now, seeing if we get anything, but it hasn't been working, and we are gonna get, we're gonna get packed up and save this adventure for another time. Okay, we have to mark our hole. Uh, if you had cut out a block, so you could put the block back if you want, and then it would freeze on the edges. We don't have that option since Eric drilled it, so we're gonna mark it. I mean, I feel like that's honestly one of the best things you can do because even at night and stuff, if you see some branches like this in a lake, you're gonna immediately know that's not right. So you're usually, that's an indicator to avoid the spot. Um, it, this will probably take a few days to freeze over in these temperatures. It'll form a little bit of ice tonight, but uh, it hasn't been that cold. So normally this would freeze pretty thick in just one night, but we have to mark it pretty well. I may have to chisel something out because we took all the snow off. I may have to like chisel a hole in the ice. Up like a teepee. I'm pretty sure that's what those people did too. Check that out. Oh, that's pretty good. Chipper poles. Yeah. So you can really bang on it. I don't want to bang that hard on the auger. Oh. oh gosh. You can't hear the uh, thing through the pole? 
Well, we're out here again. Actually, we're at a different lake this time. We are at a new one that we are excited to try. The other lake we were at the other day has been very productive, but we wanted to go somewhere new where there's clear water and Eric drilled us a fantastic hole that I gotta be careful not to fall in. So it looks really good. We're in about probably five feet of water and that is including, that is not including the thickness of the ice on top of that. So let's get our tent up and see what we can do. Hey guys, I feel like we're already learning stuff. And a thing we brought was this. This is like a pasta strainer because these holes are so big, it takes forever to use like a little ice hole skimmer. This made it go a little faster, but it's looking pretty good. The water's still dark, but it's clear. And I think we're letting some sun in. It's a little sunnier today. And we've created like a whole exterior, like three foot section where we shovel down to the ice, hoping that lets a little more uh, light in there. And we actually haven't, we haven't really been in with the door closed and this is dark house spear fishing. So let's go in there and let's check it out and see what we're doing. We got a couple other tricks we brought with us. First thing we did is we actually hung our decoy from the top of our ice fishing hut. That way we can just kind of lift it up and drop it and kind of move it around. No one has to sit there with the fishing pole. We can kind of keep it in the center of the hole. We brought a couple other cool things we're gonna try. First off, we brought a raw white potato. It's white on the inside and we had some eggs last night or yesterday and we brought a bunch of eggshells. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw these down in the hole and we're gonna try to make a contrast when these land on the bottom. And hopefully when you see a pike swim in, you'll be able to see it a little better. So let's start with these eggshells and let's see what happens. I would think that would work really well. Yeah, look how white it is. I know, that's what they say. Close it up. Close it up to see. Okay. See how dark it is. See if we can see down that hole. Well, we can see pretty good down there, but we're gonna try one extra thing. And I had a glow stick back at the cabin. So we're gonna toss a glow stick down there on a string, obviously, so we can get it out and put it on the bottom and see if that helps us at all. So watch this thing. I love glow sticks. Is it sinking? Yeah, it's sinking right now. Very slowly. What the heck? That hole's like eight feet. Yeah, we're still pretty deep. I thought that we were... So See, when you had it on the thing, I could like swirl it around. You know what I mean? This is like real rocky. It's a lot of sitting and waiting out here. Uh, I guess that's just what it takes when you're trying something new like this. Yeah, I think we've been at it for probably about an hour. An hour, yeah, maybe. Yeah. We haven't seen a single fish. We can see in there really well. Like as the sun's come out more and I feel like our eyes have adjusted and I can see the potatoes and the eggshells down there on the bottom. We got our jig like maybe two feet below the ice and just nothing has come by. No, not a single fish that we've seen. We took out the glow stick. We didn't know if that was going to be disadvantageous, so we took that out. Yeah, I don't think we really even needed the glow stick. Right? No. It's this pretty... this water's clear. We, we made a good choice as far as that. Yeah. I mean, if one comes by, we'll get it. You always want to try to find like a weedy area for pike. That's where they tend to be in the winter and the summer, actually. Yeah. And we're kind of by a, an inlet of water, too. So, But it's not working. So. No, and unfortunately, these holes, they take so long to drill and scoop out the ice and then set up your t your tent that... It's just unrealistic to move and try a new spot. And I feel like if we did try a new spot, we'd probably go a little closer to shore, get a little shallower and in a little bit more weeds. Cause I don't know if there's actually any weeds down there that I can see. Not a single fish today. So we are packing up and heading back home. But fear not, we are persistent, much like the Alaskan mosquito. You can swat us and smash us, but we're still gonna come back. And we're definitely gonna try spear fishing for these pike at least one more time, and hopefully it'll pan out. <laughs> we're gonna do it till we get one. It's been all winter. <laughs> yeah, here all winter. Oh. 
All right, we're all set. We got our hole marked. And uh, thankfully it's only a couple mile ride back to the truck. And here's the next time we're gonna keep trying. There we go guys, my first pike of the ice fishing season and we're out here spear fishing again. We didn't get one on the spear yet, we're just setting up our tent and we decided to set some tip ups and we got this nice big guy right here. This is probably like a 24 incher. I wanna show you something pretty cool that we actually caught this guy on. And that's a new to us bait and this is herring but this isn't Alaskan herring, this is herring all the way from the Great Lakes. It's supposed to have like a lot of oil in it and then when I put it in the water, immediately saw a bunch of oil going around. So this guy totally enjoyed it. Unfortunately, I didn't bring our hooligan bait. I left it in the truck and we're about 20 miles from the truck right now. Awesome fish and we, I think we're ready to head into the tent. We got nice clear water. We're gonna see if we can spear a pike today. That's a really nice one. Isn't that a nice one? He was fighting like crazy. He like took off a bunch of line. I came up here and that thing was like spinning like crazy. He's a nice one, not too skinny. This is how I put this one on. I like stuck it in there like that. Get two hooks in it. Now look at the oil. See all that oil? Isn't that crazy? It's like gas. Yeah, but it's herring oil. The red devil. The red devil's a good spin, so. Oh, I should grab the rod holder. Oh, it's spinning. It's spinning. Okay, we got another pike. It's been about 10 minutes, maybe? Nothing in the spear hole yet. But we're thinking this spot is. Oh! oh. You gotta set it. Oh, oh. Right. oh it's nice. Oh my gosh! Nice one! I'm trying it's to like extremely save, fast! I'm trying to save the bait. I shredded the bait. Oh my god! Maybe a little bigger than the last one. I don't know. It's a good sized fish. They I don't know what it is about this hole. I'm gonna check the depth because this hole has been pretty productive. Yeah, that is nice. That's a nice fish. Like two two pounds? Three pounds? That's 30 inches, Four babe. Pounds? That's a big one. Good job. Oh my gosh. What a beauty. That's what I was guessing. We wanted to show you we brought our good luck charms today, which is... Bow and Bandit! We brought the dog this time because the trail is uh, the trail's a little bit long to get to this place. We've been to this lake before, but it takes a while to get out here and it's just too long to leave the dogs. And we've got Eric's new little diesel heater set up for them so they're nice and toasty in there. Oh. Well, no luck yet. We're in pretty shallow water. I think we got like a little under three feet of actual open water. This is a lake that we've been to quite a bit. Maybe this is like our fifth or sixth time and it's always productive. We always catch something. Just nothing on the spear yet. We'll see. We got another flag, the same one. It took all of it? Took all the line out. Dang it. He's right there. He's right there. Oh, there. oh, he got off. Oh my gosh, when did he get off? He just got off. He just got off. Did you even feel it fighting? Yeah, I felt him tugging. I thought I had him. He got off. Holy cow, that was crazy. I got one hook. Good job. One spear. He looks like he went in between them. Oh my gosh. I got him with the one. <laughs> yes, this is so exciting. Me and Ariel were, were calling this uh, pike 
hunting because that's what it's like it's really not like fishing you're sitting there and staring down the hole the whole time so what happened with this guy was ariel was outside she's like we're gonna put our tent and we're gonna drill a huge hole where that tip up was because we're not getting anything over here and i was like okay go do that and i'm gonna keep fishing and i saw this guy barely at the corner of the hole or i saw something what i thought was a pike and then it disappeared so i started moving the little jig around sure enough he came back really slow just barely in to get the decoy and right before he went after the decoy i just launched a spear at him and we we got one not the biggest one it's i think it's the smallest one we got but that's probably a 24 incher but that was your first throw oh my gosh look and at him you got it perfect in the head i got him in the head with the center of the spear that's i'd say that's pretty good yeah i'm stoked we so, got one what's up with the are we not moving i don't think we need to move they're here I mean, can i drill us the hole then over there where it's deeper and where put a different tip up out sure okay good job got one <laughs> i can't believe it oh my gosh my adrenaline was just going when he came in that hole i was like no way well the sound wasn't like you splashing falling into the water so i knew it was good trying different tactics we are switching two of our tip ups that are not doing as well well i mean nothing has hit them into some deeper water. This is originally where Eric and I wanted to set up, but you can tell there's just a massive amount of overflow, which is from the snow on the lake. It pushes down, and then you get all this water on the top. And we've got like, probably the most I've ever seen, so like four inches on top. Um, we're gonna be putting this piece of herring, check that out, whole tail fin, uh, down there. And this is probably still, we're still under four feet of water but it's a little bit deeper and I think that the fish are hitting a little bit deeper. So we're gonna put that there. It's super warm today. Uh, this year, this winter has been really unusual and the ice is only like a little over a foot thick. So that's pretty, pretty thin, so to speak, where we're at. Um, but we can be out here all day since we brought the dog. So really exciting. Gotta get back in that tent. I know we're gonna see one more in there. Oh, let me set this up though, that sounds right. False alarm. Wind triggered it. Should I let him take it? Nice. These guys have such voracious appetites. Uh, this one's not very big, but you'd be surprised what this thing would try to eat. Uh, we put some pretty big fish down here and we even did hot dogs one time, full hot dogs, and they will eat that. Um, this is probably like 14 inches and they eat other pike too. So we have actually found in one that Eric caught before, I think it was close to 30 inches. It had a pike this size in its stomach. So pretty amazing stuff. Oh no, there's something on there. Another one. Oh gosh, you scared me again. I just said it. Okay, just bring it up. What? Well, I saw all the bait. What? I saw all the bait. Yeah, he got off. This is a, I think it's called a quick strike rig. I hooked this one up. It's two hooks and it's more meant for hooligan. That's what we were gonna fish with, but I, I forgot the bait at the truck. You put one towards the front and one towards the back. That way when they come and they strike it on the side, you get them in one of these hooks. But I just had two hooks in this and he got off. So that was pretty crazy. He was right there. Yeah, I saw him. That was, was a good nice size, size one. Yeah. Trying the uh, different decoy. This is the other one we got, and this one's a little smaller. Let's see if this has any effect. He goes straight. He's a darter. It darts. You know, you can. Uh, see? I think that's cool to try a different movement. Oh, he was. Uh, oh, you pulled him up backwards. He's, he's wrapped up, is what's going on. He got, he got like snagged. So this one was, uh, he probably struck it and because there's two hooks, I don't know what happened, but he got twisted up in there or maybe when I yanked, but we're gonna keep him because he's, he's a good sized fish. We've been here for two, two hours and this hole is the weirdest thing. We have like five different holes out here and this one has consistently had a fish every 20 minutes or so. Just this hole and the spear hole. 
Well, it's getting to be the evening and it's getting really hard to see down this hole. That's one thing we've learned is when the sun's out and you clear a little bit of the snow around the tent, it lights up the water a lot better. And I can barely see in there now. So we're gonna call it quits. It's getting cold. It's probably gonna take an hour on sewing machines to get out of here. We got a ton of stuff to get cleaned up, but we had an awesome time. I just feel super pumped still that I was able to spear that fish. It took three tries, but awesome trip. We're gonna get cleaned up. <laughs> That's nice. hot on him, huh? Let him get warmed up. Whew. Dang it, I wish I was a dog right now. <laughs> it's cold out here. Frozen. See a perfect spot for them right here. Super exciting stuff. This was a blast. We got a lot more experience, um, and I'm really excited for Eric. We have some really awesome plans for those fish. We've got our hole marked, and we're ready to ride out. Made it back to the cabin with our fish, and we are cleaning them. So if you clean pike right away, they're not usually as goopy or slimy but if they freeze on your trip home and then you thaw them out they will have a whole bunch of slime on them and we found a trick not that long ago to use vinegar on them you take like a scrub brush and you dip it in vinegar and then you kind of just scrape along and it gets rid of that goop so they're a lot easier for eric to process because that slime makes things really challenging this was the last fish. Eric has already started processing them. So he has this one and the very large one to process still. We've just got the one left to do and that is the big Bertha, we're gonna call her. I don't know if it's a female or a male, but we'll find out. And we're making pike chowder tonight, similar to clam chowder, but we're using this pike meat. We've already processed all of them except for one. I'm kind of doing it different ways. I'm trying to get boneless ones, and then if it's not working out for me, uh, they'll have bones in them. And it's pretty much not working out for me, but we'll see how I do on this one. And kind of interesting, we found one with eggs in it, little pike eggs. They're pretty similar to salmon egg. They're a lot smaller. I'm actually gonna save those and I think I'm gonna brine them and use them as pike bait because the same fish that had those eggs in her, she was actually eating pike eggs. So we found that in her stomach along with this little crustacean shrimp-like thing, this little black one. So this one's got a big belly on it. Let's cut it open and see what it's been eating. Eggs, nice, that's exciting. So pretty exciting. Now I got four sacks of eggs to use. I don't know if it's the time of year or what, but we've never found eggs like that inside a pike, so that's pretty cool. Wow, same thing. Well, there you have it. And the reason that Errol and I like to go inside these fish and see what they've been eating is we're fishing for these fish. So a lot of times you can find like certain fish in there or something that you can kind of think in your head when you're picking out a lure or something like that. You want to get something that looks like what they're already eating. We're all done. I'm going to get cleaned up. Uh, I'm going to first start by frying up our pike, and then Ariel's going to come in, and she's going to get started on the chowder. We've got our chowder started. We've got garlic, shallots, and an onion, and some olive oil sauteing. We've got some corn, some baby Alaskan grown corn steaming. It's already blanched, but I wanted to steam it. And I'm gonna add potatoes and chicken broth first thing to the soup. The potatoes are uncooked, but some of our other vegetables we're gonna be adding a little bit later. I'm gonna add some tarragon and sage. We're gonna let that simmer. And then later we're gonna add the cream of celery soup that we made, some carrots and some peas. It's 
time to add our fish and we made a roux for the chowder to help thicken it up and it definitely did its job it's looking good and we got a lot of fish going in look at these big old chunks Well, I'm super excited to try this soup, and I was really excited to be able to spear that pike. That was pretty awesome. And I also made a jar of pickled pike. So this will be ready to go in about a week or so. Delicious. Pike is one of my favorite fish. It is amazing. I'm sure you've heard me say that before. I just think it has such a good texture mm -hmm. and flavor, and you don't even have to cook it in butter. It just tastes so good. <laughs> I'm very proud of Eric because I was willing to just give up after the second time, so I think that's awesome we were able to actually get one yeah. that way. You got it, not me, but we're going to enjoy this tonight, and we also have some carcasses for the chicken, and it is their favorite fish as well. So let's do this. A sourdough bread bowl with pike chowder in Alaska. It's all our own food, too. I, I mean, pretty much. Not the flour and the oil. Well, that's hot. It's really good. It's almost like a gravy. I know. I instead think of a that... chowder. That's I really know. good. I know. No, it's... I agree. What is it? The broth that did that? Chowder There's chowder in there. The only thing that's missing is fresh herbs on top. Okay, like parsley. Herbs. I know. We've been eating chowder for days. It's a two and a half year old carrot. <laughs> fresh pike though, right? Thank you. 